Hi. Okay, we're going to pick up again. As you can tell, we're jumping back and forth in and out around all these different fossils because in reality, they overlap. The time periods and stuff overlap. So rather than sticking to a real straight, hard thing, which may or may not be right, because a lot of folks disagree on these timing and things, we're going to be skipping around. This is a megalodon. Okay, this particular shark tooth came from the Chesapeake Bay, what, 40 years ago? Something. I, I found this lesson. Our boat master divers, and we were diving, and, and I found I guess uh, probably five or six of these things. But that's a megalodon. Now that's from the Miocene. That's 23 million years ago to actually to the present. Now why are we why are we jumping forward? You know because we haven't even talked about the dinosaurs yet. But we're jumping forward because that's a marine. That gives you an idea of the marine uh, activity. What's going on with the marine activity? Uh, and it's just a little bit out of, out of space. There's there's a the Mason Creek, Illinois, the 300 million year old, up to the Hell Creek formation, which is the second fossil we sent around. Um, that covers that covers you know that that's probably 230 or 240 million years in there. But yet you can hardly tell those fossils apart. So there wasn't a lot of change, and and the Earth had all the ferns and everything. I am not a believer in the fern theories causing the oil and stuff. I believe it was these stromatolites. I believe that was what did it myself, personally. That's not the official word. But there was over, you know, millions of years of those stromatolites, and when they died, eventually they, they pr produced, a, you know, dead bodies, which is compressed into oil. And especially when you look at that, uh, that Genesis stone, and if you look at that real carefully, you'll see it looks like little bacteria in there. And they, they have an oil, they're very hard to polish because it has that kind of an oily feel to it. Just, just one of the Mark's flukes. Okay, moving right along. Uh, okay, now let's go back before we catch up with the dinosaurs. This is where we're going to start talking about the different fossils. This is a picture of a dinosaur footprint at Glen Rose. We were out at Glen Rose. Texas. Huh? Texas. Texas, Glen Rose, uh, uh, Glen Rose, Texas, where they've got, it's called Dinosaur Park or something out there, but they've got a creek that runs down the side of a hill, side of a mountain that's probably, you know, 75 or 100 feet high. And these dinosaur tracks go across the creek and right into the strata, you know, down under, under the bottom of that cliff. <laughs> and, and this is my foot, <laughs> setting down in one of them, and one of them out there, and and these are called these are called mole fossils. It's an impression that's made in the substrate, a native image of the organism, like the footprints, bite marks, bone imprints, stuff like that. There's several different kinds that we can have, but this is the this is one of the types of fossils that, that we have. We'll get to the Florida type in just a few minutes. Okay, remember we talked about the extinction, the dinosaur extinction, the KT boundary. Remember back there on this slide. Okay, well that's where this piece came from. This is a piece, and I, don't, I guess we didn't bring it tonight, but that's a piece, and I had a guy in Spain pick this up for me, and uh, if you look at this, look, can you see that little boundary layer right there? You can actually see it better on this picture than you can in real life, you, in the, when you're holding it in your hand, because it's a little tiny thing about like that. And uh, that is the, where you, on one side you have a lot of iridium, and on the other side you have none. Of course, the other side, the lower side, there wasn't any until that meteor hit. Here is a list of the extinction. These are the five major extinction events. The first one was the Ordovi, Ordovician. <laughs> Whatever, you can read it. Gary, zoom in on that so they can see that. <laughs> because I can't pronounce it. Okay, that was 100, uh, 444 million years ago. Okay. We lost 86% of the species that were alive at that time. Now, what was alive? Bacteria. Bacteria, right. Pretty much the bacteria. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, a few other things like that one plate I showed you, the starfish, the starfish fish piece. Okay, then we move up. 375 million years ago, we had another one, the Devonian. 75% of the species were lost there. Now, look at the time. You go... That's, you know, from, from 375 to, to 444, it's what, about 75 million years, 80 million years? Okay, that's another extinction. 
Then we come down here 251 million years. Now what, this is this is 125 million years. Do you see a little pattern here? Okay. This is 96% of that of the species were lost at the end of that Permian era. Per Permian <coughs> era. Uh, where, where are the new species come? I'm sorry? Where does new species come? Well, there's four percent left. Exactly. There's only four There's only four percent left. That's right. She's right. Mm -hmm. Where like, does it all come from? That came from the that 4%. New stuff. That's it. 4%. Yeah, because there was new Everything's animals. gone but 4%. 4%. That's what's left. I mean, this was 251 million years ago, okay? There's, there's, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's no dinosaurs, okay? Well, you had 86% lost. Right. And then you came down, you lost 75% But, they, but you, got, you got 100 million years in here. Yeah. Okay, you keep doing that. Okay, this was 96%. Almost everything on the face of the earth was gone. Okay. Except the rocks. Okay, then you come down to the Triassic. That was 200. There was only 51 million years in here. Okay. But at the Triassic, what, what is the Triassic famous for? Triceratops. Dinosaurs. Okay. But at the end of that, at the end of the tri um, Triassic, you, you lost 80% of the species. Okay, and this is counting water and and land, all right? Okay, I want to. I got a question. Okay. Just a silly question, but how did they get all the variety back in those? That's not very much okay. time okay. in reality. That is not very much time in reality, but it's you know, 50 million years is a long time. Yeah. Okay. They had what, what happened to dinosaurs? When, what happened to the di when the dinosaurs went extinct? That was 65 million years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have 65 million years. And how many dinosaurs are out there? Not any. None. Well, there are no dinosaurs. But well, we have relatives of the dinosaurs. Yeah, well, she so, believes that the birds, yeah. This is a Smithsonian fruit cake yeah. talking, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, she believes that the birds are from dinosaurs. She used to they sit are. out back and watch the birds, watch her chickens walk around yeah, the chickens are like in the backyard. Like, uh, they're little dinosaurs. Like little dinosaurs. Right. Yeah, yeah, and that's what yeah. she would do. Yeah. She'd say, She'd say, I wonder if the Triosaurus Rex tasted like that chicken. Yeah. <laughs> that was her big well, thing, right? Yeah. I'll feed you. Yeah. Chicken. But a anyway, chicken, you, you, get, you get the version. Now, I mean, this is where I get into the dis discussions with a lot of the, the theo My brother is a, has a PhD in theology, among another PhD in, in something other, nuclear engineering or something. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, he, we get into this discussion all the time because, because you have a divergence. You know, you have a divergence, and and over 50 million years, we, we we came out when the dinosaurs went extinct here, at the end of the Cretaceous, 66 million years ago, almost everything but just a handful of little little land mammals. What? <laughs> How long have we been on in existence? About 200 at the tops, at the tops, 200 million years. And we haven't changed at all. Yes, we have. Oh, you were a monkey climbing in a no, tree no, with a big I tail. Was <laughs> you know? I, was, I was not. No, I'm talking about humans themselves. Humans themselves, like mm -hmm. perhaps 100 million years, 120. Okay, and we're talking. Well, yeah. Of then time. we were here. Okay, so, but 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 you you developed. No, I'm just saying there wasn't any too. divergence. There, there wasn't was. any. There was. This is not the place to get into another okay. theoretical discussion. <laughs> <laughs> you're, interrupting my, I, I know. you're interrupting my train here. It's just like really crazy. This is what happens so. when you're married to a really bright woman. Yes. You know? This is what happens. It, it, it ends up all the time. Just be quiet. No. I'm going to put a gag on you. Anyway, we have all these species lost. We come back to the end of the Cretaceous, 66 million years. Only 75% of the species were lost. Now they call that the KT. They call that the KT boundary. It's Cretaceous starts with a C. Where in the hell, oh excuse me, you have to edit that out. Where the K came from, I have no clue. I even went back and trying to look into Greek and stuff and I can't find a K anywhere. But they call it KT. Okay, that's the KT boundary. That's what's known. So, are we waiting for our sixth major extinction? We sure are. Okay. Most of these were caused by what? Meteor. Meteor? You don't know. They were natural. They were nature. Nature were caused them. Every one of these. Did the dinosaurs poop too much and create too much methane in the air? Okay. Did we freeze? Did the dinosaurs eat each other? Did we freeze? What? But freezing is not something that they could control. 
I'm talking about something that the, what the critters themselves could control. Way back up here, the stromatolites killed themselves. Yeah. What? Well, there was one time period in the Earth's history that it froze all over. Yes, it's called the snowball Earth. Right. And that's the same in the same category that your flat Earth theory is in. They don't think that that really happened. They think it might have happened. Yes, there's a better chance of that than there is the Earth being flat. She, she's a, a flat Earth person. No, I'm not. Oh, yes. I'm just investigating. She reads all this stuff and... Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting to work. Anyway, in this next extinction, there are predictions all the way from 99.9% .9 of all life being gone. Like if you had a, a complete, uh, you know, a nuclear exchange or something like that where you could block out the sun for years, you know, we'd lose most of our life. There'd be a few of us that was left that was smart enough to dig down in a cave or something, you know, if we could bottle our oxygen or something like that. But most of it, there'd be horseshoe crabs, okay? Believe it or not, in my lab, we had an assignment one time, the Defense Department does strange things occasionally. And they wanted to know how much it would take, how much radiation it would take to kill an ant and how much it would take to kill an oyster. We never could kill the ant. I couldn't put out enough radiation. Oh, we could cook him. We could put so much radiation out there that it would actually physically heat him up and cook him. But if, if you set it out in low terms, the ant just would chug along. They'd act like they were drunk a little bit, but they would just chug along. And the same thing with the clam. The little clam just sat there, ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. You know, and just kept right on going, no matter what we give him, no matter how much dose we gave him, without cooking him. I mean, we could put so much in there that it would actually heat him up and fry him. But uh, that's what we're left. There'd be a few shellfish, a few insects, and a few horseshoe crabs. What about uh, the cockroaches? Uh, the cockroach, well. They're the survivor. Lovers. What is a cockroach? Insects. Lovers. Pay attention, students. You are getting behind me here now. Pay attention. Okay. Fossils. Trace fossils. What is a trace fossil? A trace fossil is fossilized nests, poop, burrows, footprints, body trails, eggs, etc. It's something that is not the actual animal itself, but it's something it left. Now, I think that little girl borrowed my poop fossil. No, here's some of it right here. Take this, both of these pieces, and I want you to be able to tell me the difference. Both of those pieces are, I want you to smell them, taste them, feel them, you know. <laughs> well, when we do the classes for the students, that's what I do. I pass that around. I want them to guess what it is. And I say, yeah, smell it, feel it, taste it, yeah. And the kids do it. And then they get back up here and I say, what do you think it is? And I tell them, what's dinosaur poop? <laughs> and they go nuts. The little girl starts squealing, you know. The little boys start wiping their mouth. <laughs> uh, anyway, the dinosaur eggs. I'll tell you one other quick story about the dinosaur eggs. Uh, I, I found an embryo inside one of these dinosaur eggs using a, a gammagraph from the company MOS. We were using their, their radiography and I decided just to play and I, I found the dinosaur egg. I found an embryo inside one. And the guy's fossil went from being worth a couple hundred bucks to being worth like 8,000, 9,000 I think he got for it. So, but there are ways to do that. And then these are burrows. These are th this. This is really this. And and this is this is this actually, believe it or not. What do you think? What kind of poop do you think that is? Yeah, but what kind? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Come on, take okay. a diarrhea. Okay. What? <laughs> diarrhea. No, I remember. it's it's a certain animal. That's it's a certain time. critter. What do you think? Slug. Shark. 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 Yeah, shark poop. <clears throat> yeah. How did you catch that? I don't know how they get it, but that's what they did. They told me that this was a, this was shark poop. So I, I so you're just taking it. Yeah, I'm just I'm taking it. On, on the, well, they found where they found it. Apparently, it was in a in a, a lagoon. A, a lagoon that had gone dry, and they found a lot of shark teeth and stuff in there. So that's that's where the guy came up with it. Um, it came from. Uh, geez, I can't remember where it came from now, but I've got. I've got dinosaur poop. I've got I've got more shark poop. I've got turtle poop from Florida. Okay, the turtle the turtle poop from Florida is, is kind of naughty. I should have brought some of that, but I that's in the upstairs. Did you find what their diet was? Or yeah, mm -hmm. that's what that's what they used they do. They find out what they eat. If you look at some of this stuff, there's lots of fiber yeah, in it. Now. Oh, you can see that. But yeah, these particular pieces here, you know, some of this stuff is is kind of hard to take around because the kids break it. You know, so I don't I don't take stuff that is really that's really hard to get. Like I've got some really hard to get fossils, 
and, and I don't I don't take that out. <coughs> Plus, I, as much as I hate to say this, some of the stuff occasionally will disappear <laughs> in these big glasses, you know. So we, uh, you know, we're just because we're kind of easy going about it. Not everybody's that way. Okay, and what is this right here? Now everybody should remember that from the other night. Come on. Come on. Come on, a couple of you got what is it? Coral. Fossil coral. Right, exactly. And then someone asked me about the uh, about the water inside when they cut this open. The water, the water in there is, is fairly pure. It's fresh water mostly. And the reason is because if you look at the crystals, and I didn't bring that one back tonight. If you look at the crystals, the crystals have sucked the minerals out of the water. And they crystallize right on the on the thing. And the crystals are funny. Once you get them out of the solution, it's hard to get them back in solution. Okay, does that make sense? You, you know, if you uh, if you take this look, the kids we teach the kids to make these little uh, salt crystals. You know, they grow crystals on strings down in the water. We supersaturate a solution, and then we uh, you know then we take and put it in uh, pull the crystals out. Well, once you pull the crystals out and they sort of dry, it's very very hard to get that to go back into solution. The only way you can do it is to crush it down again heat it up, shake it up, and then you'll get the crystals back into solution. But it's, it's really hard to do that. Hey, Mark. Yes. Getting back to the poop, did you see the two samples of mastodon poop that I had brought into the club? I don't think so. Linda, Linda Spaulding wants to take, get one from me. But it's amazing. <laughs> I didn't know what it was at first. It looked like piles of bone, uh -huh. fine bone, like bird bone or something, uh -huh. or, or a, a rodent. But it's actually pine needles. Pine needles. Yeah, it's pine needles. Dave was telling me that they, they ate a lot of pine needles and stuff, and that's what, there's two distinct pieces that we found, Not sure, I know it was probably in New York, but I'm not sure where we found it on one of our trips, because huh. I, I was trying to place it, because it's yeah. not what we thought it was, we thought it was yeah. bones. Well, there's a guy up in Cedar Key uh, that, has a, that has some mastodon poop, I guess. For sale, but I'm, I'm really bad about buying stuff. I don't like to buy stuff. I don't. I don't like to do that because that contributes to the the pilfering of our resources. Okay, what what I do when I do buy something that I need really bad for one of these show and tells, that I usually I like I'm donating it back to the schools. I will donate the stuff. Some of the stuff here, when we're done with these this series of talks, will go to the Yankee Town School or to the Dallas School, where they're. You know, where they have a display where they can set it up or his museum like we've got some stuff over here and if he wants to keep it i'll just probably let him keep it my stuff anyway not the club stuff i can't speak for the club but my stuff that's in this display case over here because you know what am i going to do with it my kids will choke to death we only have one kid left and five grandkids and then he would choke to death on all the fossils you know or they'd take them down to the flea market you know well Here's that's why we gave those peccary fossils off to the club yeah. What was the sense of them hanging around our house? Yeah. I had them in the house for 25 years. Yeah. You know, that's the same point. Okay, here are some true form fossils. Like I said, I sent that, that, uh, uh, ammonite. 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 I will get it right yet. Uh, that ammonite and the trilobite, this is another one. And I, I thought I brought him, but I didn't. This is a really a tiny guy. This is, this guy's about, about a quarter of an inch long and he's on a piece of uh, slate, a real nice piece of slate. But it's probably one of the clearest one I've got. And Les Leslie would not let me bring her amber again. Yeah. I almost lost it. Years ago, tw 30 years ago, back when uh, the Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park came out, I got her a, um, an amber egg about, about like that, a big, nice amber egg. And it was one, yeah, this, this is a picture. That's the bee. That's the little bee in her egg oh, right there. No. Okay, and uh, she was afraid I'm going to lose it because I'm pretty, I, I don't pay a lot of attention to what I'm doing, as you can tell. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, here is, here is that guy on the shale, on the wheeler shale, right there he right is. There. And, and then this, is, this, is, this guy is cleaned up from here. Okay, this is how it was when I got it, and this is how we cleaned him all up. And you know what that is? Chicken. It's a bird. It's close to chicken. <laughs> yeah, no, that's believe it or not, a little lizard. Yeah, okay, that's a little lizard. See, he's, he's got four legs, and the other leg is back over there somewhere. And he, he's upright. Leslie says that that's her dinosaur in the making. You know, her her uh, chicken, chicken in the making. But uh, anyway, that's that's what we've got there. Now here, these are called. Um, I just bought the little ones. 
And this tells you on the back the, the exact name of the fossil, but um, it's basically it's a fish fossil. And this what we're showing here is is, is called per per permenilla 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 permineralization. Okay. And what happens there is the soft parts of the fish decay away relatively quickly. And the bone and, and that soft impre impression is filled in with minerals from somewhere else. You know, they come, they come in and leach into the, the rock. Usually, this will happen and then there will be silt and stuff will come down on top of it. And that's what happened there, that particular fossil. It's really nice. You split it. it, it you, that, to get that, you split them. They have, over in Morocco, they've got this, they got a big business going over there. And they bust these things, you know. And uh, they can almost look and tell if a, if, if a rock's going to have a fossil in it. I don't know how they can do it, but they do. And they whack, they can just whack it down, and that's the piece that comes out. I have somewhere, I have a, uh, both parts. It, besides those little, uh, besides those Hell Creek fossils, I have another fossil that, that is actually, you see the negative and the positive, so you see the part like that. I just don't know where all this stuff's at. Okay. So, so it, with all the detail on it, does it happen really fast? No. I mean, no. you can see it. It takes up to a thousand bin. years for something to fossilize, or more. How long? Up to a thousand years. Well, so that tiny little fish, you can see every tiny little. Yeah, it was very slow. I mean, Remember what I told you about the crystals? Remember, the small crystals cooled very quickly, and the large crystals cooled, okay. uh, you know, formed very slowly. In the granite, we don't have that here tonight, but in the granite, that's what happens. Okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, and uh, this is a picture of another. The, the, I have these fossils here. Most of the fossils here, a lot of them are, are mine that I have. And uh, this one here is not as clean and neat. I brought that one because that's one of the cleanest, neatest ones I have. Carbonization, or coalification, they call it. That's what this guy is. Okay. Now, these are my favorite fossils. Why? Why? Why are these favorites? My grandfather was a coal miner. Okay, I grew up with these things around. They were around a lot. Um, he was down in West Virginia, in the Bluefield and Pocahontas, Virginia counties, and he he was in the coal mines. And and when we were digging a house, we had a house that burned down up at the old family farm, and we were digging and putting a new foundation into that house, and that. Uh, and in that foundation, we went down about eight or ten inches, and we found a coal seam. It was about that thick, and I didn't know what it was. So we, we dug out some pieces, and I took it into the extension aid, and he said, oh, that's coal. Where'd you get that? I said, I don't know. I just found it in the road. I was about to tell him. But, uh, but our, in the whole, the whole uh, uh, foundation, you, know, you dig down and you pour the concrete, and then they build up on that. And the whole foundation for my dad's house was... Uh, went through a coal seam. Okay. Seam. That was a seam of coal, that was all. We just later on, just for kicks, and when I was trying to put a well in for them, they, we had the, the well guy drill down, and they had come up about 200 feet from the house to, to put a well in to drill. He hit that coal seam, this is two or 300 feet up the hill. He hit that, and he went through that, and that was it. Another 150 feet, he went through a cave, lost the first bit into a cave, we had the cave, cave explorer group went and got the bit 10 years later. Wow. Put another bit in and then put a casing in it and went right on through until they hit water down about 200 feet. So about the same level of lower creek went into the cave. Uh, that's where I didn't bring my shark's tooth, did I? I thought I meant to, yeah, here it is. This is, this is a shark's tooth. It didn't come out of our cave, but it came out of a very similar cave. And uh, I had to make a mold. The university wanted to take, wanted to go down and get my fossil, get my shark's tooth and uh, take it out of the cave and we wouldn't let them do it. You know, that, that shark tooth cave has been there for 60 million years. We have tons of fossil, fossil limestone, big creonoids. I've been making the grand uh, grand nieces and stuff, I've been making them necklaces out of it because it, it makes really beautiful, the creonoids make really beautiful necklace pieces and stuff. Anyway, coalification, that's another way, another form. Okay, many fossils have been found in western Florida. You know, I'm not going to let you read this whole thing. You don't need to. The one thing that's important here is the fossil, I have been researching, trying to find the paper that was written on this, and I cannot find it. 
but here about 20 years ago, we were talking to some guys from one of the universities, I think it was Miami, and they had found a fossilized bones from a Spanish horse. When did the Spanish horses come into the country? Late, late 1500s? Yeah. Somewhere in there, early 1500s? I mean, late 1400s, early 1500s? Mm -hmm. So that's the earliest it could have been there, and yet this, this horse, parts of this leg and this jaw and stuff, were fossilized. And they were working, they were working on it. Okay, they were going to talk about it when they got it done, but I guess they, they never got it done because I had not heard it. And I researched here a, a couple of years ago. I tried to find the article that the guys were, were writing. Yeah. It's like creonoids in Florida. Everybody says, there was no creonoids in Florida. Not true. I've got the papers that the guy from the University of Florida did about 20-some uh, years ago about the, talking about the creonoids. You find creonoids when you go down 6,700 feet here, or you can go down to the Keys, and they're much, they're much closer near the surface. They've actually gotten some down there when they were digging the big ship channels. Mm -hmm. They've actually gotten them there. But anyway, this is what we're going to talk about now. And then, um, I don't know the best way to do this. This is a piece of tree. This is, um, from, this is from up in Virginia. That's a fossil. And, and the reason I brought that is because I, I don't have the other piece that I wanted to show you here. I, when I come back from Georgia, I will have it. That's a piece of uh, cypress tree. Okay, now I have another piece of cypress tree that's about 100,000 years old, okay? Oh, it came from 163 feet below sea level, just outside oh, of North awesome. It was given to me by Jerry Johnson, Professor Johnson at William and Mary, and it is wood. It is not fossilized, it is light. It came not 10 miles from where that piece came from, and yet it's it's, uh, it's, it's not fossilized at all. It's just extremely dry. And uh, I couldn't believe it. So we sent off a piece and had it carbon dated. And it was at least, uh, at least 60, 70,000 because back then the carbon dating was only good to 60, you know, to six or seven half lives carbon. Carbon 12, 14 has a half life of about 5,000 years. Back then you were really lucky to get anything with seven half lives. So if you went back over, 35,000 years, there just was no carbon. Well, there was no carbon in it. So we don't, but he says that the site dated to about 100,000 years ago. So here's stuff that was in the same environment, the same everything, but it didn't fossilize. So how, how did that happen? But anyway, what I've got is I've got some of these pieces here, and I want you to look at them. I'm going to leave them. Are you going to pass them around? Go ahead. Get some of those and start passing them around. Each one of these is labeled except the horse astrigate. Take the horse thing first. Yeah, take that first. Okay, just okay. just st string them out a little bit mm -hmm. so that they uh, get going. What do you cut it? How do you start this? That's With my saw. I, I was going to cut it for you, but I have a piece. I just got it. Um, I am sort of, I should have brought it tonight. If I had known you guys were how much interest you had in fossils, I have a piece of fossilized aspen that's about this long, about that big around. A friend of mine just got it for me, just just not two months ago. What is this piece? That's a that's a horse astrigula. You know, the, it's right here, astrigula. This came out of the Swanee River. All of these fossils here came came from uh, this area, they come from either the Withlacoochee or the Swanee River, and they were all found by a friend of mine, by somebody, by either us or a friend of mine friends of mine. We used to dive in the Withlacoochee River. You know, we lived right on the river back then. And uh, there's several holes there. Our son would go diving out there and he'd keep come up. We got to even, we didn't even save them anymore. We had so many fossils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's Aspen, supposedly. So what is an Ostergalus? Okay, it's the part of the hoof here. If you if you oh, hold that, ankle? it's like it's like an ankle. It's like this right in here, if you look at that. Now, how big was that horse? This was not your Spanish type horse. This is a pre- historic horse. This is a big horse. It, you can look it up. You can look it up in the uh, on the internet and you can find it. You'll find these guys were big. Great big horses like big draft horses would be now. They were not the little Spanish type horses that you think of. But that's it right here. That came to Swanee and that River. that was found here. Yes. That was up on the Swanee up above Mayo. You know where Mayo is? So how old is that? That right there is that, that this piece right here 
I think they said it was about 25,000 years, give or take. It was ice age. It was ice age. Most of this stuff is ice age. Okay. Uh, here's one of those pieces is the wolf, the wolf incisor. It's the fang of a, of a wolf. Okay, it was called a, a dire wolf, I think he said. I don't know the difference between a regular wolf and a dire wolf. I don't know. Now, if we want to really get into it.